in this video we are going to have an introduction to set theory by looking at some of the questions that can be asked on sets okay so basically before I get to solve the questions I would like to give you an introduction or a remind actually about what you already know so whenever you see a intersection B it means that you're trying to come up with the elements that are found in set A and set B. And when they say A union B on the other hand, this means that they want you to combine all the elements that are in both A and B. So usually when they say uh, for intersection we use and, then for union we use all. It's the same. Okay. So now, how do you get to do that? So we can describe that. We can show it using a Venn diagram or just by the sets, by resting down as shown in the question there. Then uh, another concept of a complement, the self-find complement of A. In such a case, you're able to see that you've been given set A in the question. So when they ask you to find complement A, they're asking you to come up with the elements that are not part of A but a part of the universal set because a universal set makes up all the sets makes up all the elements of a given sets under discussion so in this case you find that all the given sets their members or their elements are part of what the universal set that is indicated there okay so to help you understand better let's try to solve these questions that we have Okay, so we have a first question there. So the question says, given that A is equal to, those are the elements that are in A for B for C, and the universal set has been given from, so let's read the universal set, which says the elements from 0 up to what? So these are all natural numbers or all numbers from 0 to 10. Okay. So this is the universal set. All the given sets are part of the universal set. So the first question says find A intersection B. So first to find A intersection B, we need to look at the elements that are found in both A and B. That is going to be our A intersection B. So if you compare set A and set B, the elements that are common, we have 2, 2 is common. 3 is not part of B, 4 is common, so we write it, 5 is not part of uh, B, 8 is not part of A, So and 6 is not part of A, so we only have two elements that are part of both A and B. The second question says, find A intersection B complement, okay, so that's the question there. So we've been given A intersection B complement. So knowing that we've already found A intersection B, for us to find its complement, we need to risk down the elements that are not part of what? That are not part of the intersection of A and B, but are part of what? That are part of the universal. So only 2 and 4 are part of A intersection B, meaning that all the other elements that are in the universal state are going to be part of what? the complement of A intersection B. So knowing that our universal set is starting from 0 up to 10 and only 2 and 4 are part of A intersection B. A intersection B complement is therefore going to consist of 0, 1, how about 2? No, because it's part of A intersection B. 3, 4, no, because it's part of A intersection B. Then 5 or up to what? All the way up to 10. All these are going to be part of the, the complement of A and B. From there, let's move on to the next question. The next question is asking us to find the complement of A union B. So let me just uh, create some space. So we're trying to find the complement of A union B. What does that mean? We're trying to combine, first of all, the elements that are in a with B. So to guide you, first of all, come up with what's inside the brackets. So let's first of all try to risk down 
A union B then we'll come up with its complement in the next step so if you look at A and B the elements that are there we have two we list them in their increasing order two three four five then we have six and eight so one important fact or concept is that the elements that are part of both the sets that you are trying to come up with a union you don't have to write the elements twice just write it down okay so for example two and four which are part of both a and b we just write them down once okay so what is our a union b so our a union b complement is going to consist of the elements that are not part of the set above okay so try to counter check it against the universal set so we we'll therefore have zero one two is part of a union b so we we'll write it so then from two three four five six there is a seven there that is missing eight is part of a union b then we have nine and ten so these are the elements that are part of the universal set and they're not part of what a union b so that is how you find the a union b complement okay let's move on to the next part of the question the next part is asking us to find we are on four now he's asking us to find a intersection b so we have a intersection of b minus c so you are advised to find of the things that are not given so if you look at this part what you've not been given is b minus c so we need to find b and c minus c so when they tell you b minus c what does it mean so you need to understand that b minus c means is the same as b intersection c complement that's what it means so when they say b minus c you're trying to subtract what c from b okay so that is b intersection c complement something that is part of b and not part of c that's what it means so b intersection c complement okay so that's what it means so now we have uh, our b we already have our b so we can now find c complement so our c complement is going to consist of the members that are not part of c but are part of the universal so if you look at c in the question we are only have three four five and six so meaning that all the other elements zero one two three four five six are part of c so from seven all the way up to ten okay so i'll write it down there these are the elements that are part of c complement so now we're trying to find the intersection of b and c complement so we already have our b there so let's try to counter check it with the c complement that we've come up with so if you look closely at the two sets two is part of both sets okay so we'll say our b so we know that our b intersection c complement is our b minus c so we can see we can say that our b minus c is therefore going to be equal to we have what is common between b and the c complement we have two first of all two what else do we have four which is in b is it part of c complement no it's not how about six it's not then eight is so we have two and what eight being part of b minus c so now if we go back to this statement the question itself we are trying to find the intersection of a and the b minus c so what is common between the b minus c that we found and our a the only element that is found in both sets is that is two so we can therefore say that a intersection b minus c is actually equivalent to only it only has one member which is two okay so what is very important there is for you to be able to explain what b minus c means okay let's move on and look at the uh, the next question okay let me just create some space 
okay so the next question the second from last from the first part says we're trying to find okay let me just okay which we're trying to find this so x minus c where we know that our x is our universal set so we'll try to come and start with that so we have x minus c let's try to simplify it and there's a complement outside so first of all we know that what is inside means it's x intersection what c complement okay so a complement of that so what does x intersection c complement mean it means that so it's the members are a part of x and what and the complement of c so the intersection of a universal set and any given set is that given set so if you intersect a with the universal set it means that the answer is a because every set is part of the universal set so any intersection of a set with the universal set is that set so the intersection of x and c complement will give you what it will give you c complement okay but remember there's a complement outside the brackets so complement of complement gives you what c so we have c the other way of thinking about this is from this stage where we have x intersection c complement in the brackets you can now distribute the complement so if you distribute it is going to be x complement the intersection will become union the c complement will become c so we are trying to find unionize the universal set with the complement of the universal set and c so you guys you need to know that x complement which is the universal if you say the complement of a universal meaning that it's an empty set because how can it be a set if it's outside the universal set meaning that it's an empty set so the complement of the universal set is an empty set so this will therefore reduce to union c so this symbol means empty set so the union of an empty set which is empty with c, combining it with c what you're going to have is still what is still c so you can pick whichever is easier for you okay so what is important is for us to understand that we've reduced the first part to what to c so we are able to show that this is actually equal to what to c then the other part a minus b we already know what it means it means a intersection what intersection b complement okay so we can find b complement because we already know what a is so b complement is going to be the elements that are not part of b but part of the inversor set so if you look at b we have two four six eight then the inversor set is from zero to ten so subtract the given elements from the inversor set you will remain with zero one three four five seven nine and what and ten okay so these are the members of B complement. These are the members that are not part of B but part of the universal set. So we are trying to find the intersection of A with B complement. So A intersection B complement is therefore going to be equal to. So our A, we know our A is from 2 to 5. So the elements that are part of that is are going to be 3 is 5 is yes we only have two elements that are part of a and b complement so we found our a intersection b complement so now let's try to simplify the question now so we're trying to find the intersection of this set and that set according to the question because we've, we've reduced that one to b equal to c then we've reduced our a minus b to be a intersection b complement and we've already found what these guys are so we are therefore intersecting c and d, three five so if you compare this the c there you find that all the elements that are part of a minus b are part of c so therefore we can say we're trying to intersect c which is three four five and six 
You're trying to intersect it with what? You're trying to intersect it with uh, 3 and what? And 5. You find that 3 and 5 is going to be the solution. So we can therefore say that our solution to the, first, to the second part of the question is that. So we've solved that one. The last one, which is decomprimate, has already been answered. So no need of explaining that. Yeah. Let's move on to the second part of the question, which is asking us to confirm some of the laws that we need to know under the set. So feel free to pause the video and try to attempt the questions before you check the solutions. Okay, so we have A intersection B, intersection C. So these are simple things. So what do you do first of all? You can first of all get the left hand side. So this is the question that we are looking at. Okay. So associative laws just tells you the different ways in which you can you can arrange something. So A intersection B in brackets, intersection C. It's also okay if you remove A and intersect first of all B and C. So we're trying to confirm that using the given information above. So how do you go about it? So we know first of all, I'll just solve one. We know that our left hand side is actually equivalent to what? We are told it's A intersection B in brackets intersection what? C. So the way to go about it is this. So you're trying to find the intersection of A and B. So if you look at A and B, what is the intersection there? We only have 2 and 4. So 2 and 4. Then you're trying to intersect it with what? With C. So intersection. What are the members that are in C? We have 3 all the way up to what? All the way up to 6. So the intersection of the two sets is there anything that is common between the two sets? So, so our C is 3, 4, 5, 6. Then our A intersection B is 2 and 4. So the only element that is common is 4. Okay. So what is your left hand side? How about your right hand side? I'll write it this side. So for your right hand side, you can say you have according to so that's what we have the right hand side you, you, you started with A then intersecting it, intersecting it with B intersection C so our A in this case we have 2 all the way up to what? all the way up to 5 okay then intersecting it with B intersection C. So how many elements are part of B and C? If you try to look at the two sets. B and C. So we are comparing these two. What is common there? So we are able to see that 4 and 6 are what? Are part of the two sets. So we can say 4, 6. Then you intersect the two sets. So you find that only one element is what? It's common. It's 4. So you can therefore say that since the left hand side is actually identically equal to right hand side, hence what? You've confirmed. You can put that statement there, then you've already confirmed. Nothing more. Okay, so I believe you should be able to answer the other one there. Okay. If the same applies to the second part of the question and uh, the third one as well. So we are advised to try to attempt those questions. If you still have some challenges, you can email us at transcendedinstitute.gmail.com. So for now, it's a goodbye. See you in the next video as we get to talk about set interval notation.